retinal projector camera, AI language tutor, mid-journey V5, 3D printed jawbone, robotic Wendy's deliveries and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with a ton of automation news this week, OpenAI released GPT-4 the other day, which is their most advanced language model so far. The company says it can not only reason better than chat GPT, but can also use images as input. In their example, they gave the model an image of a bunch of balloons and asked it what would happen if the strings were cut. GPT-4 understood that the balloons would fly away without first being told that these were balloons, so it not only figured out what it was looking at, but also knew the logical characteristics of such things in our reality. The company says that the model is an ideal candidate for learning, and a case study on their site showed how Duolingo has incorporated it into their chat feature, basically giving learners a personal language tutor to converse with in free flow conversation. It's currently available through ChatGPT+, and devs can sign up to a waiting list to gain access to the API. Does anyone else get the feeling that as these models keep improving, it seems like a risky idea having it all under the control of a single company? Not sure what the solution is though, since the genie is already out the bottle. Piggybacking off that news, Microsoft announced the 365 Copilot which also uses GPT-4. The new Copilot brings generative AI directly into Microsoft's 365 apps like Word, Excel, Outlook, Teams and more, allowing users to ask the AI to carry out complex tasks through text input. Some of the examples used include creating email drafts from scratch, creating presentations on the fly, including finding and adding its own relevant stock photos, writing one-page word drafts based on notes from a meeting, and also analysing and automatically summarising big spreadsheets to emphasise important data. Microsoft says it is currently testing Copilot with a small group of customers, including eight Fortune 500 enterprises, and will be expanding the rollout in the coming months. In similar news, Midjourney also released version 5 of its image-based generative AI 2 this week. According to their official subreddit, V5 includes new features such as much wider stylistic range and more responsiveness to prompting, much higher image quality including 2 times resolution increase and improved dynamic range, more detailed images with details more likely to be correct and less unwanted text, improved performance with image prompting, and experimental features such as seamless tiling and custom aspect ratios. They go on to explain, V5 is our second model trained on our AI supercluster and has been in the works for five months. It uses significantly different neural architectures and new aesthetic techniques. V5 isn't the final step, but we hope you all feel the progression of something deep and unfathomable in the power of our collective human imagination. In other news, Starship continues its expansion of robot deliveries to UNC Charlotte campus. The fleet of 30 robots are now delivering from Wendy's, Bojangles and Shake Smart and aim to add more campus eateries throughout March. The school's nearly 30,000 students can now use Starship's food delivery app to order food and drinks to anywhere on campus. The trend of hospitals and medical centres testing out new delivery technologies continues also. This time, the Cleavon one will be shuttling patient test materials between the facilities of Viljandi Hospital in Estonia. Their system is not fully autonomous and relies on a teleoperator to supervise vehicles, though one operator can watch over multiple robots at a time. Honda unveiled their new autonomous work vehicle prototype this week too. Designed primarily for the construction industry, this third-generation prototype can handle dynamic work environments and work autonomously off-road. Last month, Farmwise showed off the latest version of their weeding machine at the World Ag Expo. The Vulcan uses computer vision and deep learning to automatically detect and snip weeds around growing vegetables. This new version is smaller than the previous one and hooks onto the back of a tractor, providing a way to automatically remove weeds at a sub-inch precision, all without needing to use pesticides and other chemicals. And rounding out this section with something a bit different... Robotics company Flexiv recently uploaded a video showing their risen forearm being adapted for giving back massages. According to them, it has its own vision system that can distinguish a person's anatomy and has force-sensitive heated attachments which aim to replicate the movements of a massage therapist. Would you trust this thing near your spine? Moving on to manufacturing. Surgeons in Australia have successfully helped replace a man's jaw using a custom 3D printed scaffold. 
John Manwaring lost half his jaw to cancer, and the initial reconstruction effort which took bone from his leg had also deteriorated, leaving him with no further options. Surgeon Michael Wagels and tissue regeneration company Osteopor offered to try a new biodegradable 3D printed implant technology, which thankfully worked, allowing John to eat, speak and breathe more easily than before. The porous implant was coated in shavings from John's bone so his own cells can repopulate the area and the scaffold is designed to completely disappear after approximately two years once the regeneration process is complete. Continuing with 3D printing, YouTuber Matt the Printing Nerd uploaded a video showing off his new printer design. It's called the 100 Printer and Matt claims it is the fastest 3D printer which has a printed frame. It prints the classic Benchy speedboat in less than six minutes and is apparently capable of doing high quality prints in one tenth of the time an Ender 3 would need. A lot of this is down to the intentional weight distribution of all the components into a column which runs down the middle of the printer that keeps things stable at higher speeds. There is a GitHub page with all the design files and details if you'd like to learn more or create your own. I also saw this cool project on Adafruit's blog recently and wanted to share. Thingiverse user 3D Michael has created a 3D printed whistle keychain. Users in the comments are very positive towards this design, and some even say it reaches over 90 decibels. I wanted to show it because it highlights the wider shift from buying products to making your own, which open hardware gives the potential for. Obviously this is a fairly simple object, but this is just the beginning of the trend. On the back of Wing's announcement of their delivery network and autoloader drone system last week, we now have another entry into the market. Zipline is a drone delivery company we've covered for some time. They've historically been involved in delivering medical supplies around the world, but recently they announced the intention to expand to drone deliveries for general consumers. In a new video, they showed off a tethered drone-like device which attached to the main drone and drops off packages touting delivery times that arrive in minutes instead of days or hours. This week we have two different projects claiming a type of X-ray vision using augmented reality. The first is a system by Augmedics which enables surgeons to see real-time feeds of a patient's insides directly in their field of view using a headset with dual displays, allowing them to keep their focus fully on the procedure. According to a recent press release, Augmedic's platform has already been used on over 3,000 patients as of a few weeks ago, and more features have been added recently to take advantage of AI image enhancements to visualise particularly important and challenging parts of surgeries. MIT researchers have also modified a HoloLens headset to allow users in a retail stock-picking situation to see what's inside the boxes. They did this by adding a custom RFID antenna to the front of the headset, so when the user moves their head, the antenna activates RFID chips within range which are attached to products inside boxes. The user can specify what product they're searching for, and when the correct RFID tag is powered on, they can see where it is. What I like about this idea is its simplicity. There's no need for complex vision systems and it doesn't matter if boxes get mixed up as it works exactly the same. Some more electronics news this week. First, Asus announced the Tinker V, their first computer to use the open-source RISC-V architecture. This particular SBC has a Renesus RISC-V Andiscore AX 45MP single-core CPU clocked at 1GHz, 1GB of DDR4 RAM, optional eMMC storage of 16GB, 2 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, 2 Combust 6 pin terminals, 2 RS2325 pin terminals, 20 pin GPIO header including UART I2C, ADC and SPI interfaces, and is powered by a DC barrel jack via 10 to 24 volts. SpaceX also announced Starlink Roam, allowing users the ability to use the satellite internet service on the go, anywhere in the world where Starlink coverage is currently available. I could see this being used by IRL live streamers in some of the world's most remote places. And finally we end with a niche product which helps those with visual impairments to take photographs. Sony recently showed the DSC-HX99 Neo Viewer Kit which replaces a standard camera viewfinder with a new type of laser retinal projector which as you might guess projects the image directly into the back of the user's eye. In their promo video Sony showed Ibuki Ban a freshman at Kanagawa Prefectural Hiratsuka School for the blind using the camera, and he was very positive after testing it out. 
I was amazed at how clearly I could see what I wanted to see. I have low vision since I'm a person with albinism, and in addition to having poor eyesight, I find light very dazzling, so I have to wear special sunglasses when I go outside. With this device, I'm able to see the world as it is. The first time I used the camera, I was moved by the variety of scenes I saw through the viewfinder, like blue skies, birds in flight, and how the streets in town actually look. I never imagined I could ever see the outside world without sunglasses, so I was very excited that I could see things this way. It also felt so good that I was able to take pictures properly by myself, and for the first time I experienced just how much fun it can really be to take pictures. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.